Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, welcome to another Friday. It's the 28th of October, 2022. And today was extremely rainy and thunderstorms all morning long. So I had to delay my trip up to Giga Texas for a few hours just to try to get a window where the weather wasn't too bad. But anyway, one thing I wanna show you at the intro and then we're going to do a comparison looking back four months of the battery cathode plant just to see how it progressed. For the intro, one of the interesting things that I noticed today is on the south end, as you can see in these images, there are two new cranes being assembled. And this is being done on the west side of that concrete lot that's being demolished. Now, they would normally not need cranes unless they're going to be doing some pretty large steel assembly, which would imply that there's going to be some side of construction down at that south end. So something to continue to monitor, but very interesting. So anyway, let's do the comparison at the battery cathode plant, and then we'll get into the main video. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you very much for watching. For today, let's look back four months or 120 days of progress at the battery cathode plant. I know that seeing videos almost every day, it's hard to really judge the progress. So hopefully this will help put it into context. This is how the battery cathode plant appeared on the 27th of June. You can see that only some of the steel superstructure was being assembled and they were still working on some of the footings for the steel as well. Just one month later on the 25th of July, you see the entire steel superstructure is completed. They're working on the roof and the second and third floor decking installation and they're preparing for some additional work on the ground floor. Moving forward another month to the 22nd of August, we see all of the second, third, and roof decking has been installed. They're getting ready to do the weatherproof membrane and other components and equipment are arriving on site. Just one month later on the 26th of September, we see all of the roof weatherproof membrane is installed. They're installing the exterior wall concrete panels. They're working on concrete on the ground slab and more equipment and materials have arrived. Finally, just a couple of days ago, we see most of the exterior wall panels installed. The interior walls and other equipment with HVAC and ducting has been installed. We see new construction on the east side and they're starting geopier work on a second building. So I hope this comparison of just 120 days of progress at the battery cathode plant was helpful and informative. So let's get ready for the main video. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. So starting off on the southeast side, you can see all of the rain after effects around the entire factory. And uh, it uh, really was a lot of rain in a very short period of time, maybe a couple hours, but I'm glad I was able to get this flight in. So we're going to be traveling a little bit to the north on the east side. You can see stamping machine section on the left and also where that uh, platform is. That's where body and white begins. Also below on the bottom of the screen, you can see this parking and material staging location. It looks like some new materials are being delivered, possibly some pipes. I'll also bring you up over to this portion of the body in white where we've seen new receiving docks added to the existing walls and the work on the concrete apron on both of these, as you can see, it looks like plumbing work on both sides now, and then they will install the concrete again to make these operational. While we're here, we'll stop on the top of the roof here at the body and white structure. And this is where they're adding in the HVAC ducts. You can see all of them have now been installed on the left-hand side, those four small rectangular section and the larger opening. So progress continues. I'm gonna head back towards the south so you can see that there's a brand new section of solar panels 
being installed. This is next to the A of Tesla. And here's all of the mounts that have been installed so far and the bricks that are holding the mounts down. And this will help fill out the space between the L and the A of Tesla. And it uh, continues that uh, solar expansion along the five letters of Tesla. So we're going to head back towards the south on the east side of the stamping machine structure. I wanted you to see all of the steel on the left-hand side in that material staging the uh, work that's going on for more of the concrete removal and also some trenching. And in the left-hand side of the screen, you can see these two yard trucks carrying bridge crane rails, and these are for the casting machine structure. And since they are yard trucks, this tells me that they're moving them back from the west side of the highway staging area back into the casting machine structure. So uh, the work on reinforcing the columns to hold the bridge crane appears to be completed. This is a major milestone because this will help support the new Gigapress when it arrives. Also, you can see where the concrete has been removed and the cross cutting that is still going on right in this middle section. You can see one of the workers working on the saw cutting. Um, the, also the aftermath of all of the heavy rain that just ended a few minutes uh, prior to me beginning to fly. This also is a good view of the entire south end uh, where the cars are still being stored at this side of the building as the concrete is continued to be removed and you can see just how much of the concrete has been removed and again on the left hand side here the saw cutting where they're continuing to work their way towards the west and very soon there won't be any space left here for the model y's so they'll have to to be moving them over to the east side now something else is very interesting i want to show you coming up on the left hand side of the screen these are the two brand new cranes that have been delivered to site. Uh, some of the materials and the uh, boom components haven't arrived yet, but uh, they're starting to set these up. Now, these are used for steel assembly for much of those steel components we saw on the east and also on the south side. So this implies that we're going to start seeing some vertical construction in this area. What it will be exactly, I'm not sure. But obviously, we're going to be seeing some construction beginning, which is kind of exciting. So let's continue along the west side of General Assembly towards the north and just give a good view of how this side of the building looks today. Here I stopped the drone briefly just so you can see the landscaping work on the left hand side of the screen and where it is in relation to the main entrance. And we'll continue farther to the north along this side. You can see because the later afternoon there are a lot of the crews are getting lunch right now with all of these food trucks just underneath the drone. And we also see what looks like some recycling efforts going on into this truck. You can see the forklift with uh, some of the material that's been uh, compacted and I believe it's being put into these trucks. Uh, at least it looks to me like they're doing a lot of recycling with some pallets and so forth. But uh, if you have any other ideas, please let me know in the comments. we arrive towards the north end of the building this will be a good view of a lot of the activity that is going on again you can see all the uh, wet concrete and asphalt from all the recent rains in the center of the screen you can see this continuing plumbing and the sidewalk and curb work is going on and this will give you a good view of just the number of materials that are being arrayed outside here waiting for them to be picked up and put into the paint shop the low, all the components with the white are SSIISA, and these materials were starting to be delivered about uh, 48 hours ago. Uh, as I go across the northeast corner of the casting machine, still I do not see any sign, at least on the outside of the 9,000 ton gigapress arriving. But as I mentioned at the south end, the bridge crane rails are being brought back into the casting machine structure so that'll allow them to install another bridge crane. 
See all the castings going underneath the bottom of the screen, uh, waiting for movement into body in white. And this is another area where they are doing uh, some concrete removal, some plumbing, and reconfiguring the receiving docks on this side of the building. Here's a good view of another parking lot on the south end. You can see quite a few of uh, Model Ys being uh, staged. Uh, this is one of the other locations that they're using as that south end uh, continues to be have the concrete removed and they need another spot for the Model Ys. You can see the helicopter pad. Still no helicopters that I've seen uh, coming into this particular area, but I do watch. And of course, the new car staging and transportation lot you can see quite a few Model Ys here as well. Trucks picking up the Model Ys and the flow of cars from here up to the north, about 30 miles to the Hutto Rail Station, continues at a pretty quick pace. And again, I think we're at the 350 to 400 car per day range. This is a great view of the Warehouse on Wheels yard as it appears today. Again, on the north end, you can see how it's been all cleared out. Uh, because of all the rains, I didn't expect to see much work if they are going to do some paving, but that's something I'll continue to watch. Um, this is the material storage. The warehouses are the small trailers and some of the workshops on this side of the, uh, the construction site. You can see it's just some of the activity in the middle part of the construction site as well as, as things continue to be moved away from where the warehouse on wheels is uh, located. And also, you can see on the bottom of the screen here, there's some more of the concrete that has been removed from the south end, and it's being stored here as well as north of the battery cathode plant. So quite a bit of concrete being stored all over the place. We're going to continue up here on this part of the site towards the battery cathode plant, and we'll see what activity is going on up here today. You'll see on the east side, a lot of the water in that trench where the blue pipe is located, but looks like the dirt that they put on top of the pipe to keep it from floating up has done its job, or at least it appears right now. At the bottom of the screen, you can see more of the concrete vaults being prepared for installation. Probably going to see some more trenching for those to be used. Also on the left-hand side, you can see the GeoPier work that is ongoing to install bunch of geo piers on certain sections that have been marked off with flags where columns for the new structure will be erected. And uh, the weather is kind of slowing them down just a little bit, but uh, there is progress being made there. The concrete apron section here where all the rebar is being installed continues to progress. You can see that more rebar has now been placed on the left hand side of the screen. And it looks like it's uh, nearing the rebar installation completion, so maybe we'll see some concrete poured here pretty soon. Also a good view of all the interior walls and some of the HVAC ducting and pipe work that has been installed on this part of the building. We're going to continue towards the north. I'm showing you the amount of wall panels that have been installed on this end of the building. And it's... Uh, Quite a few of them. Uh, they just have, you know, about three more rows to go to finish up with the concrete walls on this side. And you can see it's already at the north end. You see more of the concrete vaults and manhole uh, covers that will be used at some point in the future. This is a good view of the clearing and the material staging up to the north. You can see all of the standing water. Again, the rainstorm just ended as I began flying. Uh, and hopefully this will dry out soon over the weekend and then they'll be able to get uh, more work going on uh, and next week. I'm going to pause the drone here for a second just to give you another view similar to what we saw with the four-month comparison and this will help just give you an idea of how much progress has been made. You can see the wall panels on the north end of the building have been installed. You can see the five receiving docks as we saw them uh, constructing on the perimeter grade beam in the slab and also it looks like a doorway on the west side as well. As I pull back you can see that the steel structure now has all of its superstructure on it and it looks like they're preparing all of the uh, components for the walls so soon we'll probably see this enclosed very similar to what we've seen over at the electrical switchyard with its control room. 
Also note that they are now installing the wall panels into this center section where there's been the heavy reinforced concrete slab and the three deep foundations that have been installed recently. So at the rate they're going, another couple of days and we will probably not be able to see inside here any longer. But you could also just see the progress that they've been making with the interior walls and just the overall interior uh, of the building at this point in time. I'll pull back and you can see some more of the concrete panels waiting for installation, some of the uh, machinery for the trench work. You can see that yellow trench box that uh, helps prevent from the sides of the trenches from collapsing in. And you can also see that uh, trench with all of the dirt uh, holding down the pipe to keep it from floating with all of this rain. And finally, I'll just give you a closer look inside of this large, tall, open section uh, with uh, the walls inside. It looks like there's some slab work that has been uh, done recently. You can kind of see those lines. And it looks like they're configuring it for some machinery, possibly some uh, furnaces or calciners for the lithium hydroxide uh, production. So let's head up towards the electrical switch chart and see what activity is going on here today. It looks like because of all the heavy rains, some of the work has uh, come to a a short pause up here right now and you can see the amount of the standing water in those two rectangular sections and also in the water detention pond it's uh, quite full right now so once it dries out a little bit more they'll be able to continue to do some more work you can see the steel poles segments waiting for assembly and these will be mounted to those circular mounts there are four of them and this will be how they connect the high tension wires to the power lines and to the switch yard itself. This is a good view from the north looking south of how the switch yard looks today. A lot of the steel components installed on the footings. You can also see more of the steel poles that will be used to install six more of those A-frame structures as you can see in the top of the screen. And many of these poles have those angled bases that give you that uh, A-frame structure shape when they install them. You can also see that they have some insulators on top of some of these poles. Also some of the uh, disconnect uh, devices that they use to disconnect electricity were installed a little bit to the north. And you can see this next section of footings have already been poured and then the rest of this area where the uh, uh, machinery are and the drill will have more of the drilling once the ground uh, dries out. And here you can see these two square uh, foundations for the transformers and just how much water is in them. One of them does have the rebar, the other will just have to wait till it dries out and then they can install more of the rebar next week. So I'm going to position the drone towards the uh, north and we'll head west and I want to show you some more of the activity that is going on across the highway. A good vantage point of the factory and the central highway that runs uh, right next to it. And we are now looking at the Another part of Giga Texas's property, this is where material staging has been uh, used for about two years now, plus also some training initially for some of the Martin Marietta crews. But right now you can see that they are stockpiling a lot more of the steel components. The gray is recent and I think this will be used possibly inside the battery cell production and then the red steel is much older and has just been sitting here for about two years or so. Also see some of the older uh, concrete panels and some HVAC components. And also I'll look down here real quick and show you that there looks like there's some more of these concrete vaults and manhole covers next to these old uh, columns or our steel beams that were removed from General Assembly. And then the, this new 
staging location continues to have more and more materials and trailers and equipment uh, moved up here. You can see some of the uh, piping work or piping on the south end, that blue. See some very interesting uh, steel components, some in black, some in red, and you can see where the workers are, um, I guess, inspecting some of that red material. Now, some of that is used for production inside for mounting uh, machines and robots and other production uh, related equipment. I'm not sure exactly what these items are. There's uh, some in the black and some in the blue. Uh, but uh, very interesting just to see how this entire site continues to have more and more materials, including some of the plants that will use, be used for landscaping and some of the purple pipe for the irrigation system. So there you have it, Giga Texas after heavy rains and thunderstorms just came through the area this morning, but it looks like the water management system that they've installed is handling it quite well. I hope that you enjoyed the video and all of the information. And as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend.